the formidable robot. I grew up on channels like Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon and PBS Kids during the 90s. I believed all of them were good. I more frequently watched CN, but Nick had SpongeBob and PBS Kids had Arthur, so I believed they were both good. I had a big old TV in my room as a kid. I usually turned it off, but every now and then I just flicked it on and watched for a while. Every now and then, I would awake to the TV still on. Thanks to this, I ended up witnessing something very very strange one night. For the longest time, I thought this was a weird nonsensical dream I had. That's what I thought when I first posted about it. For those who didn't see the original post I'm referring to, I'll describe what I saw. I woke up one night, and I saw the credits at the end of a Spongebob episode. Then the logo came up. It was very different when compared to what it was supposed to look like. This wasn't anything insane or intense, but it was really weird, to say the least. Instead of the normal Nickelodeon logo I was used to, I saw some really weird cryptic shit in place. First off, the logo was red and the words were backwards. Second off, there were two of the same clip layered left to right, transparent. Some random guy in a suit. You could see it was a video as his mouth was moving and he moved slightly. His voice wasn't heard though. He was shrouded in darkness, and had a red tint over him. There was some backwards text in place of the text below the logo. Reversed and flipped text, just like the words on the logo. I didn't know what it said. It faded away, and went to commercials like usual. I was confused, turned it off, and went to sleep. I woke up that day, thinking that it was just a weird dream. I continued into this belief until now. I got some responses to this post, but some intrigued me. People had remembered having very very similar dreams. Various people who grew up with Nickelodeon and the likes remembered having similar experiences. A good bit of them were exactly like mine, with the altered logos appearing after different shows. Some had worse experiences. Three or five had an experience along those lines, but much much worse. They recalled seeing characters die in gruesome ways or go through horrible things, while some recalled seeing actual NSFL real gore on the screen. I disregarded these as fake, and was skeptical about the more reasonable ones. Some people didn't recall this in the slightest, but were interested by the dream. Some had been convinced that some part of this was a massive troll, either being my original post with the comments or just the comments. I remember I reblogged my own post, talking about the fact so many people were just bullshitting in the replies and reblogs. I decided to look at the accounts of some of the people who had similar experiences, exact with minimal differences or outlandish. A good chunk of them had stated where they grew up, and it was very similar to where I grew up. This was very very strange. I thought these were burner accounts, but no, they were actual accounts with a post history with more than just my post. Made before my post too. That really confused me. That got me thinking. Was that actually a dream? That was all this whole thing went after a bit. Then we get to where we are today. Somebody sent me a message. It wasn't a reply to my post or an ask, but a DM. The person I talked with was okay with me sharing this. His name was Bruce, username, Bruce507. They told me that they could answer my questions, and that they knew everything about what others and I had experienced. They sent me their Discord tag, and told me that if I wanted to talk, I could whenever I was ready. I thought this was fake, but I jokingly entertained it. So, I hit him up. He responded after a bit, and said he'd explain in a detailed Google Doc or an email. For this, he asked for my email. In hindsight, I should not have trusted him. Though nothing bad happened from it, thankfully. The first DM from him after that was this. Just so you know, that was real. What you and others experienced did happen. I should know, because I was part of it. All of the major questions you have will be answered in the long form doc or email, but I can answer the smaller ones here. I asked him some of the smaller questions like he asked me to do. He answered them all, quickly. Those messages weren't as formatted as his first one, so that solidified it slightly in my mind. I asked him if this was all a one-time thing, and he responded. Nope. It went on for a bit. 
I can't explain any further, but still. It was not a one-time thing, but a continuous series of things. Interesting. I asked him if there were many other people associated with it. Yes. This was a group, a movement, basically. I'll let you know about the rest later, but right now that's all I can say. I had only one more question. I asked him. How can I trust you? He responded quickly. I have proof. Proof that all of this happened. Flash drives, VHS tapes, everything. I can share everything with you for good reason. Some of the shit I got, I just genuinely can not share with you in good faith. Genuinely disgusting shit. So yeah, I have proof. This is all real. I'll share this with you when I'm ready. I didn't have any more questions, so I just waited. Took a day, but I suddenly got a notification from the same guy. Here it is. He linked a Google Doc full of text. I responded with that I'd read it later, and I did. Once I was done doing my dishes, I went right ahead and clicked the document. I will copy and paste its contents here. Hello. This document has everything you need to know about No Dolakin. What you remember was real. What some other people in the reblogs or replies remember is real too. Some were lying for attention, but a good chunk were telling the truth. Nickelodeon had horrible 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 working conditions. At least it did where I worked. We were consistently overworked. Working hours were extended and the pay wasn't good enough to justify it, our boss was a raging cunt, and so much more. I had worked a bit in both the entertainment and the animation industry. I enjoyed it. Nick was the only exception for me. Me and some work friends had the same feeling about the working conditions. I'm gonna list their names below. Jim. Rick. Anthony. Ben. Ben. Me. Me and said work friends were really mad about this. Nick was one of the most famous and well-known mainly cartoon companies. Finding another job wasn't an option in my mind. Things had to change, and it would be best if soon. So, me and my work friends had a plan. We took a page out of the Max Headroom incident, and decided to start hijacking the network. We got to creating once work was over. Once we were done, we had created an altered version of the logo. That was what you saw. Many variations were made, different versions where we used different iterations of the Nick logo with the same alterations. That guy in the suit layered over it was Anthony's idea. Said it added more mystery or something. That backwards text there? It read. Nickelodeon is not a perfect company. They are horrible and should not exist. It treats its employees like dog shit. It is an unjust company that deserves to rot in hell for eternity. We began to do this more. Every now and then, we'd hijack the network with altered logos to spread our message. It was an important message after all. This would go on for a good while. Then Ben had the bright idea to up our ante by editing the shows. The first time we did this, we did it during an episode of Spongebob. It was during that episode where Gary leaves Spongebob for Patrick or something. We just edited his mouth off and gave him big irritated eyes. Said eyes were from Anthony, edited onto the sponge. He would fly at the screen, and scream. Cheesy jump scare shit. The jump scare noise was just Dan screaming at the top of his lungs, edited to sound demonic. Then it immediately cuts to the altered logo. I was fine with this. Nobody is going to get horrible PTSD from having spooky scary Spongebob hell at them on their TV. It'll scare kids, sure, but it's kids. Not saying I have any ill will against kids, but the fact of the matter is that it wasn't anything horridly awful. Also, it wasn't crossing the border into being morally reprehensible. Another one we did was one where Rocco, during an episode of Rocco's Modern Life, had his head turn into a spooky skull or whatever and stare directly at the viewer and do nothing but heavily breathe. Roll the no in logo. That one was my idea. I wanted to do something that was actually kinda scary, even if it was a little cheesy. Something more subtle, I guess. Rick was allowed to make one of his own, and he chose to use Doug. He put Doug in front of a backdrop of an empty building. Everything was photo-negative, including Doug himself. No sound. That was all he did. Cut to logo. We did stuff like this over the movement's lifespan. Just making cartoon characters go big scary oh no why 
we decided to up the stakes. One day, Anthony came up to us with an idea. We would have characters die. The first time we did this, it was an edit of Hey Arnold, where Helga pulls a knife on Arnold and stabs him to death before cutting to the altered logo like always. I was also okay with this, as it's not like anybody is going to get mental scars from seeing a cartoon character stab another cartoon character. Some other broadcast intrusion we were responsible for that is in the same vein as this one was this one where Cat Dog got get in their heads with a hammer, killing them instantly. Cut to logo. I remember I came up with one where Tommy from Rugrats had his eyes roll to the back of his head, immediately drop dead, and then cut to logo. I don't remember who made this one, but I recall that Timmy's dad killed Dinkelberg with a machete in one. What I do remember about its creation was that Jim voiced a lot of it. This was when it had gotten to the point where we had been creating entirely new episodes to broadcast instead of editing pre-existing ones. Now the thing is, this went on for a good bit. Then Jim's bitch ass came up with an idea. He had the not so brilliant idea to pull up pictures of mutilated dead animals to strengthen the message. The shit they slapped in there still makes me wince and almost vomit when I think about it. Disemboweled and or skinned puppies is the type of shit I recall. They'd add it to everything. I felt like I had to stay quiet about it, because at the end of the day, what I was fighting for was important. Notice how I said I instead of we. They weren't really protesting against Nickelodeon at this point, but were just being cunts. I wish I snapped a lot sooner. They decided that they'd attack more sources of Nick-related things. They'd sell tapes disguised as compilations for Nickelodeon shows, and set up many many websites advertised as a website where you could download Nickelodeon show episodes for free. The website names were something like, NickelodeonForFree.com. Thankfully, that URL leads nowhere now. Ben decided it would be a great idea to use real people. Human beings. Mutilated horribly and mauled in many many ways. Intestines strewn about, eyes torn out of their skulls, etc. Suicide victims, murder victims, and people who had been involved in horrible accidents. I hate the fact I felt like I needed to keep quiet. I should have stopped it immediately. The distribution of tapes of course continued, and so did the hijackings. You're lucky you didn't see any of the images depicting dead animals or people. Then Rick decided to up the ante again, as if using real fucking dead people just wasn't bad enough. The people used were adults before. Now, it was mostly children. Fucking children. Dead children. Something that I don't know if I can forgive myself for is the fact that I still kept quiet during all of this shit. But one day, I snapped. I refuse to tell you what I mean, but it got much much worse. So much worse. They showed this to me. It was this edit of a Danny Phantom episode where nothing special was added until the end. This loud low pitch buzzing noise with an image I fucking refuse to describe layered over it. I want to throw up so bad even thinking of it. That's when I snapped. I ran over to Jim and punched him in the teeth. I tackled him while he was still in shock, and strangled him. I don't regret that. I punted him with all my might, punching him in the nose so hard blood went flying and it broke like crunchy leaves in the fall with jello inside. I don't regret that either. Those little shits pulled me away from him and I reacted accordingly. I grabbed a nearby chair and threw it at one of them. I screamed at the very top of my lungs about how I felt about all of this. I ran out and never looked back at those assholes. I ran back to my house and threw up into my toilet for five whole minutes. I decided that they could very easily continue, so I decided to commit to watching Nickelodeon every day to make sure they didn't do anything while I was gone. Thankfully they didn't. I can send you the VHS tapes and the flash drives if you'd like. I will offer you all the proof I have if you doubt at all. That's all. I was shocked. Genuinely very shocked. I went back to the DMs with the guy and I asked for the needed proof. We FaceTimed. He looked somewhere in his 30s. We spoke, and he said he had all the proof. He pulled out VHS tapes from around him and flash drives, asking if I wanted any of them. I did. I have a metal bat inside my house beside my bed, so I decided that if he had malicious intentions, I could just very easily defend myself. Thankfully he didn't. 
I heard my doorbell ring, and I answered it to see the guy I spoke with. He had a box, which he opened, and handed to me. He walked away. It was all real. All of it. There was no way he was lying to me now, because all of this would have taken way too much effort for a simple troll. They all ended with the same logo I remembered so vividly seeing. I whipped my phone out to take a picture of what I saw. There it was. The thing I had seen as a kid that I had mistaken for a dream for so long. It truly was real. The clip of that guy in the suit in the red lighting. That all happened. That little doubt in my head was shrinking and diminishing by the second. Not only what I experienced, but many of the things I had seen people say they remembered in the comments were true. The suited guy looked a little distorted compared to what I remembered, but I was barely awake at the time, so that makes sense. The flash drives included assets of many of the tapes. The clip of the guy in the suit and edited, voice clips, etc. I asked him if there was any way to prove he had the things he didn't want to show me. He just kept pulling out the same VHS tapes and flash drives. We came up with a compromise. He'd film himself watching the obscene shit, and blur the video when anything obscene popped up. He was sitting in front of a CRT, and was watching the tapes. Edited episodes upon edited episodes that always included something obscene, thankfully blurred. He'd comment during or afterwards what it was, sometimes. When that little Danny Phantom edit came up, the clip that appeared was seemingly so vile that he had to cut the audio out alongside the blur. You could see him holding back his vomit when that part ended, before he ended up going off camera, and into the bathroom, before audibly throwing up. I don't think I'll release the tapes and assets today, but I'll try to soon. That however is not where this ends. I was scrolling through YouTube the other day. I decided to search no Dolakin, or similar terms relating to this whole thing, to see if I could find any other traces of this whole thing. It wasn't when I searched for this that it appeared, but it was later when something popped up in my recommendations. It was a video uploaded in 2013 or 2014 that was taken down before I could re-upload it or take a screenshot. It was a video with the title of something like, Really fucking gross edit Spongebob DVD during Are You Happy Now? The thumbnail had a guy filming his TV. The video was fairly recently uploaded, being only two days ago with not many views. He was speaking in the beginning once I clicked. Hey so, I'm a father, right? My kid loves Spongebob, so I got him a DVD as a gift. And he came to me after a bit fucking screaming saying that bad things were on the TV, begging me to look. I looked, and I saw some really messed up shit. I'm gonna play it for you now. He inserted the DVD, and I immediately saw a very bootleg looking DVD selection screen. Episodes listed were normal, until the dad filming picked Are You Happy Now? He fast forwarded until the suicide joke happened from the original. Q Squiddy pulling a rope down while saying, maybe this will make me happy, here. I can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. However, instead of pulling down a clam in a cage which promptly sings, that doesn't happen. The screen pauses, and Squidward's face changes after a while. He grows a giant ass grin, and his eyes become this bright vibrant red. He grins, and his head violently twitches. This annoying ass noise played in the background as Squidward twitched violently. It cut to black, purely silent for a few seconds. Then, we see the video cut back in. Squidward's legs on the top of the screen, swinging left to right, with the sound of a swinging rope playing. This was clearly meant to portray that Squidward had hung himself. This really really weird distorted music track playing in the background, sounding reversed and purely wrong. Then, the screen went blurry, and you could see colors of crimson and human skin where the TV screen was located. The sound of many people screaming into a mic played over it. The dad filming reacted. That's a fucking dead kid. Why in the name of God was this shit in a goddamn Spongebob DVD? That is fucking disgusting. Jesus fuck. I don't know why the hell this shit is here, but I won't allow it. Whoever the fuck made this garbage, you are a piece of shit. When the blur went away, I saw a familiar logo. The same logo from those hijackings. I was immediately taken aback when I saw that. There was no way. 
I don't, sweet Jesus, I don't know who to call or what to do. I'm gonna call the cops. Fuck this shit man, Jesus. The video cut off as the man filming stopped the camera. I was extremely shocked, and I immediately went to contacting Bruce about it. I linked it to him, and I told him to watch the whole thing through. He responded a bit later. No. No they didn't. Those pieces of shit. They're doing it again. What the fuck? I'm gonna find them, I need to. I am so fucking mad. How the fucking hell? Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god, I am flipping my shit. I am so fucking angry, I am so fucking mad. Those scumbags. Had the balls. To keep doing that. Shit. How the hell did they keep making that garbage up to 2013? Oh my fucking god. Oh my god, what if they're still doing it? What if they're doing it right now as we speak? Oh my fucking god. No 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 no. No. Fuck this. Fuck them. God fucking damn it, I thought I got them to stop when I kicked the shit out of them. Where do you think they are? Where do you think they are right now as we talk? Please fucking answer. I told him I had no idea. God fucking damn it. Fuck. I told them, I thought I set them straight. I was wrong. What the fucking hell is wrong with them? After a pause, he spoke again. I just need some time to think about this. I don't know if I'll talk to you at all, but I'll message you when I have to. I'll keep your Discord tag around on my computer if I need to say anything to you, but for now, I'm just gonna add you. If you need to write mine down, say so and respond when you have it. I told him to wait, wrote it down, told him, and he left. That's all I have to post. It's confirmed, I guess. That was real. I did see that, it wasn't a dream. Lots of you in the replies and reblogs did indeed also experience that. I don't have anything else to say. This has been a shock for all of us that saw that post, and me who posted it. I have nothing to say. This may be the most surprised or shocked I've been in my life. I don't really know how to react to all of this. Well, that's the end of this post. I don't have anything else to say here. I compiled everything I felt here, everything that's happened. Expect me to post the contents of the tapes and the flash drives on this blog later. I need to process all of this. That's all I have for now. Farewell. Oh, and if you have any more stuff about this whole thing, DM me. I need to know if there's anything else. If so, I have somebody to contact.